Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, the XPCHO Transient Expression System, Optimization of Monoclonal Antibody Protein A Purification. I am Brenda Kelly Kim of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We're delighted to bring you this educational web seminar sponsored by GIPCO, part of the Thermo Fisher Scientific Family. For more information, please visit www.thermofisher.com slash protein expression. We have a few important announcements before we begin. This webcast is designed to be interactive and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit your questions by typing them in the green Q&A box, which can be found by pushing the green Q&A button. We'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the screen icon in the lower right hand corner of the slide window. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing this presentation properly, please click on the support button in the lower right hand corner of the slide window. Top right hand corner of the presentation window, excuse me. I would now like to introduce today's speaker, Lena Mpanda. Lena Mpanda is a research scientist in the Life Sciences Solutions Group at Thermo Fisher Scientific in Frederick, Maryland. While at Thermo Fisher Scientific, Lena has served as a technical lead for new product development efforts for products utilized in downstream processing of therapeutic proteins and is currently supporting development and post-product launch efforts for products used in cell biology applications upstream. Lena's work specifically focuses on analytical characterization and purification of therapeutic proteins. She received her master's of pharmaceutical science degree from Northeastern University, Boston, Mass, and her undergrad degree from Sacred Heart University, Fairfield, Connecticut. I'll now turn it over to Lena for her presentation. Thank you, Brenda. Um, so, as Brenda mentioned, I'm going to talk about protein A purification workflow for monoclonal antibodies expressed in XPCHO. So, just a brief outline. I'm going to go over some introductory material, and then I'm going to talk about protein A purification of XP293 and XPCHO using resin vendor recommended conditions. And then what you see as I go through the data is that the resin vendor recommended conditions were found to be suboptimal for XPCHO. And so we went ahead and optimized a protein A workflow that was specific for proteins expressing XPCHO. After that, I'm going to go over some additional tips and good practices and follow that with a conclusion. So the XPCHO transient system allows for high titer production of a broad range of recombinant proteins. Due to the high titers in the XPCHO system, as well as other differences with XP293 culture conditions, purification conditions will vary. Specifically, uh, XPCHO media and feed components to support high density cell growth and productivity are very distinct from the requirements of HEK293 cells. Therefore, as you can imagine, the XP293 purification method would not necessarily equal XP2, the XPCHO purification protocol. For this reason, process optimization is required to, to obtain ideal purification conditions. So before I go into the data, I'm just going to go over the problem statement, as well. so basically the drive behind this work. Um, as I mentioned previously, resin vendor recommended purification conditions were found to be optimal for XP293. However, they were not found to be they were found to be suboptimal for XPCHO. Specifically, our XPCHO uh, XP users observed that from a clarification standpoint, the supernatant was difficult to process through standard 0.22 micron bottle top filters. Uh, and from a purification standpoint, the elution material as well as the column appeared to have a yellowish tint that we later found was contributed by a single component that was found in the media. This yellow color can interfere with protein quantitation, especially if you're doing absorbance me measurements at 280. Still, what we found was monoclonal antibody recovery was consistently above 90% after 10 cycles of purification with both the XP2 and XP293. And these measurements were performed using a Forte bio ectat with protein A sensors. And again, so here we are going to present an optimized protein A purification that is suitable for XP2. So 
before I go into the optimized workflow, just I'm just going to walk you through the protein A purification of XP2 and XP293 using the resin vendor recommended conditions. So a little bit of background, uh, a monoclonal antibody was expressed using the XP293 and XPCHO transient expression systems. For XPCHO, since we offer three different protocols for this work, the standard titer protocol was used. A titer of 0.95 grams per liter was, was obtained for XP293 and 1.67 grams per liter for XPCHO. The product was then purified using the purification protocol as described in the MAP Selecture Resin Handbook. And it's important to note that the buffers used here were similar to those that are recommended by most resin, uh, protein A resin manufacturers. Here we have a schematic of just a general overview for the purification workflow. At the top left-hand corner, you find the clarification uh, procedure. So what we did to clarify the supernatant was we centrifuged the supernatant to pellet the cell debris. Following that, we filtered the supernatant with a 0.22 micron filter. And these were your basic research filters that are vacuum bottle top filters that are pretty much the worst case scenario that you're going to use in R&D. They are better filters that are meant to filter crude supernatant. Um, after clarification, we went ahead and determined the load conditions. For our load conditions, we loaded 80% of the dynamic banding capacity C5. For this particular column, this equated to 28 megs of antibody per mil resin. And in terms of the ACTA method for purification, we did a 5 CV equilibration with 20 millimolar sodium phosphate and 150 millimolar sodium chloride. We then loaded the protein at 28 mg antibody per mil resin, as I previously mentioned. Following that, we did a 5 CV wash with equilibration buffer, and then a 5 CV elution with 0.1 mol of sodium citrate. Following this, we then neutralized the conditions with the equilibration buffer and did a 5 CV post elution wash with the equilibration buffer, which is the 20 millimol of sodium phosphate plus 150 millimol of sodium chloride. Following that step, we then went ahead and sanitized the column with 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide with a contact time of about 10 minutes. So here we have a XB293 protein A uh, chromatogram. On the left-hand side, on the lower left-hand side, you see the equilibration phase. That's a nice flat uh, baseline. After that, we move into the sample application phase where you see breakthrough of your HCPs. Those are the proteins that are not binding onto the protein A ligand. Following that, we, do, we wash the column with that same equilibration buffer, and then we get our elution peak and we collect our elution material, and then we neutralize the column again with the equilibration buffer and we do a systems clean in place with sodium hydroxide. For XP293, our monoclonal antibody recovery was greater than 90% after three cycles, but as I mentioned previously, we did push to 10 cycles and we were still able to get really good recovery even after 10 cycles. Now, moving on to XPCHO. Here we have an XPCHO chromatogram, a, pro a protein A chromatogram, similar to the XP293. At the very beginning, you have your equilibration phase. You get a nice flat baseline, and following the uh, equilibration phase, you move on to the sample application phase. And the same thing here happens. You see breakthrough of your HCPs that are not binding onto the column, but you notice in the XPCHO, you have slightly uh, you have a slightly higher UV peak here. And just to add a little bit of an excerpt, the the cell density for XPCHO is a much higher cell density as opposed to XP293. Um, following sample application, we do a column wash, and then we follow that with the elution um, and a, another equilibration step and a system clean in place. Same procedure as the XB293. So the monoclonal antibody recovery was 92% after one cycle with the XPCHO. But as I mentioned previously, even though we got these good uh, monoclonal antibody recoveries, the elution material that we collected after purifying proteins that were expressed in XPCHO was yellow in color. So that, that was the main driver as to why we went ahead and optimized the protein A purification protocol. So moving on to the optimization work that we did for protein A purification um, protocol for XPCHO. So just a little bit of background. Screening experiments were performed to obtain the optimal protein A chromatography conditions for the XPCHO system. 
A custom DOE was designed to determine factor importance and the interactions among them. The goal was to maximize percent recovery of monoclonal antibody as well as percent impurities removed in the wash peak. Now, the percent impurities that we're talking about here is we identified a single component in the media that was contributing to that yellow color. And what we found was that single component had a characteristic peak. So our goal here was to really maximize that peak and make sure we're getting rid of, of, of that component as much as possible. And achieving this goal would maximize productivity as well as column lifespan. So in terms of the DOE experimental setup, Again, the goal was to maximize percent recovery of monoclonal antibody and the percent impurities removed from the wash peak. When you look at the DOE test conditions, we, we really, the test conditions that we looked at here were really narrowed down and were not as broad because a lot of these conditions were, uh, we came to, the, to these conditions from prior experiments. So we kind of had an idea of the conditions that were going to work. So they're a little bit more narrowed down, and this was more of an op optimization DOE. So the elution buffer types that we looked at were citrate or acetate. The elution buffer concentrations that we looked at range from 25 millimolar to 100 millimolar. The equilibration and wash buffer type was either tris or sodium phosphate. The equilibration wash buffer pH was between 7.4 and 7.1. And you'll notice as I go through these conditions, particularly for the equilibration conditions, we're not swaying too far off physiological conditions. A lot of these conditions are within the physiological range. Um, we also looked at addition of sodium chloride, not just in the equilibration of the wash buffer, but in the elution buffer as well. And on top of that, we didn't just look at addition of sodium chloride, but looked at the different sodium chloride concentrations that you can add to both buffer types. And that range was from 25 millimolar to about 150 millimolar. So here we have the protein A purification DOE results. In green, we have the conditions that were, DO, that were found to be optimal from the DOE. And in purple, we have the results that you get when you use the resin vendor recommended protocol. On the left-hand side, in, on the lower left-hand side, you see the MAP percent recovery, and those are the red bars. And on the top, top left-hand side, you see the percent impurity peak area, and that is in the blue, and that is in, that is in the blue. And so really what we're looking for here is to get really maximal performance from both perspectives. We really want to get that high monoclonal antibody recovery, and we also want to get high percent peak area to completely remove those peak impurities. And those are the bars that are highlighted in green. Now, if you look specifically at the impurity removal model, this model found three factors that were significant. And the three factors that were significant to the model were the wash or the equilibration buffer type, the wash buffer concentration, and sodium chloride buffer addition. So if you were to choose the optimal settings, and really the optimal settings, if you look at the prediction profiler, are where the red vertical and the bar and the red horizontal bar intersect. And for TRIS, that was 25, for the, buff, for the wash or equilibration buffer, that was 25 millimolar TRIS plus 25 millimolar sodium chloride. And for the wash uh, and for the elution buffer, that was uh, an extra addition of 87.5 molar sodium chloride. If you look at the monoclonal antibody recovery model on its own, again for this model, three factors were significant to the model. Those three factors were wash buffer concentration, elution buffer concentration, and sodium chloride concentration. Um, for the optimal settings, it, the for the elution buffer, 25 millimolar elution buffer was found to be optimal. For the sodium chloride concentration, that was 87.5 millimolar sodium chloride, and for the wash buffer, 25 millimolar. What you notice here is the concentrations were a little bit more important. When you look at the elution buffer, it was whether you use citrate or acetate, that didn't seem to impact the model very much, but the concentration was more of a significant factor. The same thing for the wash buffer. So if you put the two models together and really try and find the optimal conditions where you get not only good monoclonal antibody recovery, but complete removal of that um, 
impurity peak that we're trying to get rid of that is causing that yellow color, the optimal settings ended up being 20, uh, 25 millimolar tris plus 25 millimolar sodium chloride in the, uh, in the load and wash buffer, and 25 millimolar elution buffer with 87.5 millimolar sodium chloride. And then this, here we see um, the protein A chromatogram that really then shows you what that impurity peak that we're talking about is. So if you look at the top chromatogram, what you see is the vendor recommended condition. And if you look at the peak, it's a little bit more broadened um, compared to the D optimal condition where you get that really nice sharp peak. And when you look at the post-dilution wash impurities, you see two peaks. It's really that first peak that we found that was characteristic of that single component that was causing the yellow color. But also you notice that when we do a system clean in place, we also get more removal of the overall impurities that are stuck on the column. So moving on to the qualitative results. What we observed with the optimized protocol was that from a clarification perspective, we really needed to add a prefiltration step. So the, the supernatant was prefiltered with the 0.45 micron filter prior to that 0.22 micron filtration step, and that really resulted in easier filtrability. But as I mentioned before, these were vacuum bottle top filters that we're using, and these are really the worst case scenario that I used in R&D. Um, much, much better filters like duct filters can be utilized, and th they could potentially ease, they could potentially provide some ease in terms of filtration. Um, in terms of the wash and equilibration uh, conditions, we, we went ahead and increased the, the, the wash from five column volumes to 10 column volumes, just to make sure that you're really getting that UV to return to baseline before you move to the next purification step. Um, the next thing that we noticed is after we use this optimized protocol, the elution material no longer had that yellowish tint. It was clear as you'd want to expect from a typical protein A elution. Also, the wash buffer was also able to strip the column of any remaining impurities. The other observation was monoclonal antibody recovery for the optimized protocol compared to the suboptimal compared to the suboptimal method was comparable. However, long-term Long-term column performance can be affected with the suboptimal method. So here we have a general schematic of the optimized protein A workflow for XBCHO. On the top left-hand corner, we have the clarification. And again, we did the same thing with centrifuge and superdain to pellet the cell debris. What we did differently here is we went ahead and pre-filtered the superdain with a 0.45 micron filter. Following that, we then filtered the supernatant with a 0.22 micron filter. For the load, we loaded 80% of the dynamic uh, binding capacity, the C5. And for the purification, uh, for the active purification protocol, as I mentioned previously, we went ahead and increased the number of column volume washes that we were performing. So instead of 5 CV equilibration, we went ahead and did a 10 CV equilibration. We loaded the protein at 80% of the C5. Then we followed that with a 10 CV wash with the equilibration buffer, a 5 CV elution, and then a 10 CV post elution wash with the equilibration buffer as well, and then sanitize the column with 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. And the contact time here was about 10 minute contact time. And here we have the MAB recovery over multiple cycles when you use the optimized uh, protein A purification method. And really the take home message here is that we were able to obtain good monoclonal antibody recoveries over multiple cycles with the uh, optimized protein A purification uh, method. So here I have some additional tips and good practices. So due to the differences between XBCHO and, X and XB293 expression system componentry, it is really important to, share the column, to ensure that the column is thoroughly washed and the UV has returned to baseline. As I mentioned previously, that's, that was the main driver to move from a 5 CV column wash to a 10 CV column wash. And also one thing to keep in mind is the system vol uh, void volume versus the column vo uh, volume, especially, especially when you're using the smaller one mil um, columns that sometimes GE provides. Um, to ensure product purity, load no more than 80% of the C5 of the column. And again, this is mainly because due to the high titers for many proteins that are in 
expressed in the expenditure expression system, it is important to obtain a tighter estimate in the crude supernatant. And this, you know, we've seen this with customers where they've actually lost some protein because they used um, a, a protocol that, they, they, that was designed for a different expression system and then they got higher titers with the XP choke expression system. So it's really uh, very important to check the titers of your protein uh, in the crude supernatant prior to loading onto the, um, onto the column. Also, to avoid contaminant buildup, Reversing the flow direction is recommended to help flash out particulates and to prevent contamination of the lower part of the resin bed. So, in conclusion, the purification conditions recommended by most protein A resin manufacturers appear to work well for the XP293 expression system. However, they do not provide optimal results for the XP2 expression system. An optimized protocol has been presented that shows improved performance compared to the vendor recommended conditions. The optimized protocol ensures longer lifespan, thus reducing overall costs. And testing is currently ongoing to evaluate reducing the concentration of that component to improve both the filterability and the protein A purification aspect. And lastly, I would like to acknowledge the Thermo Fisher Scientific Cell Biology R&D Group, um, Joan Zamuda, the director of the Cell Biology R&D Group, Chao Yan Lu and Jian Lu, the lead scientists involved in the XP2 expression system, and Kevin Vedvek for his help on the statistical analysis. And at this point, I will take any questions. Thank you, Lena, for that informative presentation. Before we get to our questions, I just wanna remind our attendees how they can submit their questions. Questions can be submitted by typing them into the Q&A box, which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button in the lower left of the presentation window. And we do have one question. An attendee asks, what is the ultimate total MAB purified and how scalable is the purification? So for, so for the experiments that we were running, um, the cell culture super, the cell culture shake flasks were 125 mil shake flask, 30 mils of protein that was loaded, and the titer was about 1.67 grams per liter. And I really loaded all of it, so I'd have to I'd really have to go back and do the math to figure out the total mix of, of protein that was loaded. So I'd have to actually go back and if I can get back to you with the total mix that was loaded because I'd have to do the math for that. Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, in the meantime, while we're uh, waiting for more questions to come in, do you have any other um, just general comments for our attendees on this topic or anything else you'd like to say? No, just that we're actually currently working on a protein A purification protocol that we will be at the op um, we're working on submitting the protein A purification protocol to our customers, whoever our customers are that are going through um, challenging um, uh, who are going through a challenge when they're purifying their protein. So right now we're working on drafting a protein A purification protocol that should be available that we can submit to our customers. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Lots of good information here today. We do have another question in our queue. Uh, an attendee asked, you used UV for checking the purity. Is UV good enough? Are there any other systems you would recommend to confirm purity? So we didn't, so we didn't just use UV to check purity. We actually also used the Forte Bio Optet with protein A sensors. So we didn't just take the sample and um, read an absorbance measurement on a, a nanodrop, for instance. So we actually did confirm the connotation using protein A sensors on a Forte Biotat. So that was a secondary measurement that we did. Okay, good to know. 
I don't see any other questions in our queue at this point. I would just like to thank Lena and Panda again for bringing us this informative presentation, as well as thanking Gibco and Thermo Fisher Scientific for making today's webcast possible. We'd like to let you know that this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through November of 2016. We invite you to let your colleagues know about that on-demand so they can join in and watch the presentation if they were not able to join us today for the live event. Thank you again. We hope we see you again. Goodbye.